All right, hey guys. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the three main mechanisms that underlie muscle growth or muscle hypertrophy. If you haven't watched the first video in this series of lifting science for beginners, the description is in the link below. And in that video, I covered just the basics of muscle structure. So we're gonna build on that today when we talk about the actual mechanisms of hypertrophy. I described in that previous video that tissues can grow either by hypertrophy, which is an increase in size of cells, which is what skeletal muscle does, or by a mechanism called hyperplasia, which is an increase in the number of cells. For muscle cells, which grow via hypertrophy, the size of the contractile elements within the cells actually grows. And what is a contractile element in a skeletal muscle cell? So the basic contractile unit of skeletal muscle is called the sarcomere. And while the structure is actually pretty complex, and I won't go into great detail about that in this video, but just envision wires within a larger cable, so wires arranged in parallel side by side, as well as picture the segments of a caterpillar, so sort of arranged end to end as well. So what are the mechanisms or the triggers for muscle hypertrophy and an increase in the number of sarcomeres within skeletal muscle? So three main things. The first one being muscular tension. The second being actual physical damage to muscle. So both of these combined are sort of under the umbrella of physical stresses. And then the third is metabolic stress. Now I'll go into a little bit of detail about each of these and how they relate to the way that you're training in the gym and how you can optimize each of these mechanisms in order to stimulate as much muscle hypertrophy as possible. First up, muscle tension. What is it and how does it contribute to hypertrophy? So the word tension as it relates to muscular contraction just relates to the force that your muscle is able to generate either while it is shortening within the concentric portion of a movement or whether it's lengthening as during the eccentric portion of a movement. When muscular tension is greater than the load or the weight that you're trying to move, the muscle shortens. That's the concentric. When the tension within your muscle is less than the load or the resistance or the weight that you're trying to move during the eccentric portion, the muscle is lengthening. Now, the way muscular tension contributes to hypertrophy is as you're executing a resistance training exercise, you're moving load with your muscle, there's a constant tension that is produced or force that's produced by your muscle. And this force generation, particularly while your muscle is lengthening, contributes to a disturbance within the structure of muscle cells. These structural disturbances trigger an increase in the number of actin and myosin filaments within each sarcomere, and indeed, as actin and myosin filaments accumulate within your muscle, there is a visible increase in the overall surface area and volume of your muscle. And that is muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth. So muscle damage. Now muscle damage you can think of separately as well as related to actual muscular tension as you execute uh, resistance training exercises. And this physical trauma or this physical damage um, to varying degrees triggers a response from your immune system that's actually somewhat similar to the immune response to an infection. And the triggering of your immune system results in the release of various immune mediators or immune system factors, as well as various growth factors. It's been noted that this immune response is able to trigger what are called satellite cells within skeletal muscle. There is some evidence to suggest that actual nerve activity in the region of damaged muscle tissue is also able to activate satellite cells. In previous videos, I've touched briefly on what satellite cells are. They really are just stem-like cells that reside within muscle tissue that play a very important role in not only repair of muscle cells, but also in growth by hypertrophy. These special satellite cells are thought to contribute to muscle hypertrophy by number one, creating copies of themselves which then fuse with existing muscle cells or generate new muscle cells. What this does is allows for an increase in the number of actin and myosin filaments, as well as other proteins that are important to muscle structure as well as muscle function. The third trigger of muscle hypertrophy is what is called metabolic stress. Now, what is this and how does it contribute? As with any other biologic function, muscle cells require energy in order to contract. During sustained periods of resistance training, energy generation often needs to occur in the absence of oxygen, and this is called anaerobic metabolism or anaerobic energy generation. I won't get into the details of this process, but basically during anaerobic energy generation, various waste products accumulate within muscle cells, 
And indeed, these waste products need to be eliminated from muscle cells, but the rate at which it's produced often exceeds the rate at which it can be cleared or eliminated. Now, one of the leading waste products is lactic acid, and we're all really familiar with what this is because when we're going through you know, a sustained period of exercise, we start to feel that burn in our muscles, and that's due to lactic acid buildup. In addition to lactic acid, other waste products accumulate, including hydrogen ions, inorganic phosphate, free radical production increases, the overall acidity of the cellular environment increases, uh, we have an increase in cell swelling due to fluid accumulation, and overall all these things contribute to general metabolic stress of the muscle cells, and this triggers an overall hypertrophic response. These metabolic stresses themselves also trigger, number one, changes in the level of some hormones, two, some growth factors, and three, again, chemicals associated with the immune system. Okay, so having covered these three mechanisms that underlie muscle hypertrophy, what does this mean for your training? So how do you trigger sufficient muscle tension? How do you then ensure that you're inducing sufficient muscle damage? How do you know when you're exposing your muscle to sufficient metabolic stress in order to trigger hypertrophy? Well, the answer is going to be complicated as well as individualized. A lot of this is going to depend on number one, which exercises you select. Number two, your ability to very meaningfully and purposefully execute each of those exercises, as well as your ability to manipulate the various training variables. Training variables would include intensity or load, so how much resistance you're exposing your muscle to, as well as number of reps, number of sets, and how that contributes to overall training volume, the tempo at which you perform uh, each rep of each exercise, which then is related to time under tension, your rest period, as well as how close to failure you are on each rep of each exercise. And in the end, in addition to manipulating these various training variables, a lot is going to depend on factors such as your sex, your age, your training age, how experienced you are in resistance training, your nutritional status, your goals, and so on. With all this individual variation, there are just a couple pieces of advice that are going to be generally applicable to pretty much everybody. Number one, execute your exercises in a manner in which you ensure that you maintain tension within the muscle that you're intending to target. Number two, ensure that you lift with sufficient load or resistance to really challenge yourself. The Number three, maintain a rep range on your exercises that will allow you to essentially feel the burn. Basically, that's a buildup of lactic acid within your muscle tissue, therefore giving you a sense of, yes, you are stressing your muscles metabolically. Number four, occasionally and safely, approach muscle failure, particularly on the concentric phase of your movements, and if you have a spotter, go for eccentric failure as well. Number five, be deliberate and not necessarily explosive with your exercises. Maintain a rep tempo that allows for significant time under tension for each of your exercises, and pay particular attention to the pace at which you perform the eccentric portion of each movement, as this has been shown to have a greater effect on muscle hypertrophy. Finally, Rest. Rest between each of your sets so that you're mostly recovered but not entirely recovered before you perform the next set of each exercise. Now I'll be continuing my series on the impact of the various training variables on muscle hypertrophy shortly, so be sure to subscribe if you're interested in how each of these has been demonstrated in scientific studies to influence the rate and degree of muscle hypertrophy overall. Okay guys, so I know I promised a shorter video, but really there was quite a bit of ground to cover in trying to explain the three mechanisms that underlie muscle hypertrophy, at least at a surface level. If you found the information to be informative, if you overall liked the video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up. As always, I encourage you to subscribe to ensure that you receive notifications for future videos in this series on lifting science for beginners. And as always, until next time, aloha from Hawaii. Thank you.